So what's shaking today, Adrian? Hey, AC. We just keep getting these few recurring questions in. And being the expert that you are, I think you should lay some knowledge on them today. Well, let's get right to it then. So what's our first question today, Adrian? Our first question comes from Mac. He's from Westchester, Ohio. And he's saying, I'm in the market for a new compressor. What is the difference between the splash lube versus the pressure lube? And what would be my cost difference? Great question, Mac. Well, uh, pressure lube and splash lube have been in the industry for decades. Um, but there is a vast difference. Let's, let's dive into the splash lube for just a second. And we're going to look at this. I hope I got this in line with the camera. But it, what you're going to see here is what we call our dipper. This is a connecting rod. And here are the two bearings. Well, as the crank rotates, the dipper passes down through the oil and basically splashes the oil up on critical surfaces. Now, the only way the oil makes its way to the bearing is basically finding its way into a access hole here at the bearing level and on the opposing side and at the wrist pin at the very top in these two holes here. So what we basically have there is an outside in oiling technique, which is somewhat inconsistent and not good under heavy loads. Now let's focus more on pressure lube and what it's doing for us. So if you can envision, this is a crankcase setting here and this filter is covered with oil. So the process starts by beginning to suck oil through the filter. Now can we reuse this oil filter? Yes, absolutely. When you go to change the, or do the service on it, you can wash this out and reuse it as many times as you want to. Awesome. Now as the oil then, as I was saying, passes through the filter, it then comes up the housing and into what we call a gerotor. Now I might want to add, this gerotor is common to the industry in cars. They use them in many different models and techniques of motors, so they're, they're very dependable. And it then begins to push 40 PSI of oil through the crank shaft and down, and then it begins to exit out the crank journal. So you're saying 40 PSI of oil goes through the crank and then up the rod? Yes, and let me show you how that works a little bit further. So as it exits out the crank, it, it basically coats the bearing, consistently coats the bearing, and then oil then finds the least path of resistance, which is a hole, gun grilled hole, that comes right up through the rod. And as I said here, it moves, the oil moves right on up in the wrist pin here and then exits slowly out here. So there's a consistent oil film, if you will, on all those surfaces. Okay. So what would I benefit from getting that? Well, one is you're gonna cut down on friction. And anytime you know you cut down on friction, it's gonna take less torque to run your, your, your compressor. And as your friction drops, it's gonna run cooler. So what's gonna happen then is your longevity because your pump's cooler, less friction, it's gonna probably last you 30 to 40% longer at a minimum. So is that gonna cost you more money? Well, here's the good news. All of this is standard on our five through 25 horsepower pump, and the cost to you is zero. Zero dollars. And I might add, if I'm working for my competition over here, I'm shaking in my boots a little bit because this is a pricey increase on all of their units. So if I was you, my next stop, I'd be buying an Emacs compressor. 